Welcome, welcome very, very much to Conversation. It's a great pleasure. Welcome to the program. A dear friend of mine from, I guess we're going to have to get that down absolute and everything, but it's many, many years, or maybe we could start counting in decades, that being Tony Anthony or Tony Granovich. We're friends from way back. I think we could maybe reminisce back when the, the um, left forum was being held down at the college, and it was called the Socialist Scholars Convention. Well, I don't know. I think we, we met in 96. Okay, thank you. When that's I ran for state assembly on the Upper East Side. Yeah, <clears> it just seems to me we're no for Anyway, that's our guest. We're very happy to have him as a friend, and uh, we're going to be talking about uh, his, uh, his many, con you know, the, situ the human condition, particularly with reference to the, uh, the election that we're in the middle of now. And Tony, so good to see you again. Well, always, always, Carol. You, you like you, you, you we're going to just do our chair here for you to sit in. Okay, okay thank Why you. Why don't you become a producer over here? You could do that. I know? could probably Let's do it. Let's talk about that on the, you know, over coffee or something. Right. All right, fine. Welcome to the guests, okay? Tony, um, I'm very happy to be in touch with you now. Here we are, it's, uh, what is the date today? It's the uh, 22nd, is it, of uh, March. Um, 2016. How do things look for you? I know you've been very, very involved with CUNY and with that, mm -hmm. and you've been involved in with uh, students working there and so forth. Right. How are things going from your perspective? I talked to you on the phone, and mm -hmm. you said things were looking good. I wonder maybe you could fill me in on your the situation as far as you and your sense of uh, values and your sense of participation in things that are moving well for you or not. How's it going, Tony? Well, things are looking good in terms of the protests we're building because mm -hmm. uh, Governor Cuomo is starving the university. I didn't even hardly know that. But we haven't, ha in, we in, haven't had a contract in six years, uh -huh. and he refused to sign the maintenance of effort, which is responsible for paying the utility bills and... For, for what? For CUNY, the utility bills, the oh, maintenance of CUNY. effort bill. He vetoed it, even though the legislature, both houses, you <coughs> virtually <coughs> unanimously passed it. That's a Somewhere, serious matter. That's a very serious matter. Yeah, it is indeed. And yeah. I, it's a race matter. I mean, yeah. I talked about race yeah, and class book, politics. Hold it up next to you. Maybe we can uh, oh, show it so you, to get a sense of the camera. Hold no, it. no, it's no. there. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the point is that it's a race issue because CUNY is 60% African and Latino. Is that right? Yes, yeah. and SUNY is 20%. So Cuomo is trying to starve CUNY and force the population of the city, which is pretty much majority um, non-white, uh -huh. or shall we yeah. look at it positively, African yeah, nation, yeah. Latino, not yeah. Caucasian. Uh -huh. um, this is a problem, and it's, it's, it's accelerating because we haven't been able to keep up with salaries. The, most of the teaching is done by adjuncts mm -hmm. who average 20000 a year. Is that across the country, that? Is that well, a trend across the country, but country. it's especially right. extreme in New York because you know the rents are extremely high here. Okay, that's so interesting. Faculty, yeah. good faculty can't be attracted. I mean, we have good faculty. I can you know, consider my colleagues excellent faculty. Mm -hmm. But we can't afford to bring people in, and people are leaving. We have an assistant professor who has a studio, and she's... Uh, had to take in a roommate mm -hmm. in her studio. We had a department chair who, after 11 years, went to the University of Georgia. Okay, so uh, this is this is serious. And plus, our student population, half the student population's families earn less than thirty thousand dollars a year. Wow, really? So CUNY half is the say that again. One half yeah. of the CUNY student population, uh -huh. which is close to five hundred thousand students. Yeah in the 22 colleges, yeah. earn less than $30,000 a but year. you mean the students you're talking about? Yes, the students. Well, the students I have students it. on the student government yeah. who commute from a homeless shelter. Okay. We well, have yeah. students who have to choose between a metro card and lunch. What's happening here is criminal. Well, it's what you're talking about is a thing that's... Uh, uh, a, a, the in inequity of the economic system. Yes, it's, yeah. it's, and it, because it's a global economy, and every rich person on the planet wants a second home in New York City, they driving mm -hmm. people into, I don't know what, into hanging out with each other in, in, in rooms that they can't move around in. And it's, uh, and the, the housing policies are abhorrent, as you know. We you have a record, so, record homeless mm -hmm. population as I speak. Is that true, yeah? Yes. Yeah. So aside from that, I mean, I'm faculty advisor to student government. Yes. Faculty advisor to CUNY divest from fossil fuels. Yes, we're going to talk about Two weeks ago, that. I was up in Albany testifying mm -hmm. 
uh, before Liz Kruger and Felix Ortiz um, panel, uh -huh. in which uh, they are sponsoring a bill to have the pension funds of New York State divest from fossil fuels. Oh, that's, and, so we're going to talk in detail about Bill that. Bill, Bill McKibben was Skyped in, and we had another, we had Brad Holloman, another uh, legislator there. We had one representative from the American Petroleum Institute which, who claimed that uh, we are not able to provide jobs. Well, we can show that uh, we do provide jobs. Um, I mean, this can, point can be brought out later. Uh, is and, this, is yes. this condition that you're talking about, particularly with the students, under $30,000 a year? Uh, in my remembrance of being undergraduate and everything, the students were always... They, they, they had no source of income other than family, or maybe they got a scholarship well, right. or Many something. Many of the students come to class exhausted because they have two part-time jobs. Yeah. Uh, and they, uh, it's, you're it's, not it's, supposed uh, to have to have a job when you're going to school. Well, in, school it, your work is to do study and exactly, read the book. Exactly. Yeah. In Germany and Cuba, if I can yes, use right, two counterexamples yeah. to uh -huh. different societies, yeah. higher education is free. Yeah, sure. And that's yeah. free in a lot of countries. That's what Bernie's providing and, for well, the public schools. Do you think it's a good idea, public universities? Well, university? obviously, but CUNY was, f was free uh -huh. from 1847 to 1975. Wait a minute, let me get it straight, because I'm a little bit out of sync. We used <coughs> to have a college up on 138th Street. Is that That's CUNY? City College. That, is that the one you're that talking about? That was the about? flagship college of yeah. City University That's not when the it one started. you're talking about specifically now. No, no, there are 22 yeah. separate colleges. Okay, okay. City yeah. College yeah. was the first college, uh -huh. a free academy to, to educate all the children of the city, um, higher that's education. That's 138. That's okay. 138. That's the one that they call Harvard on the Hudson. Well, yes. And that was a tremendous school. The intellectual outcome from that school was absolutely Exactly, amazing. and it was free. Yeah. When it was uh -huh. white, it was free. Yeah. And well, it was white then, back then. Of course, and it, there were no women as well. Except at Hunter College in the, in Hunter the teaching, yeah, yeah right. teaching. But but City College, there were no women. I think the first woman was in 1950. Boy, uh, oh boy, it's so it seems so primitive to me, or something, or at least what's trying to be born is something massive kind of uh, changes that are called for, including bringing the women into full participation. That's a big. That seems well, to be going was, on, and there's breakthroughs in that realm. It seems yes, to me. Yes, of, of course. And uh, they were making progress, but economics is still a well, stumbling block. There's blocks, still a right? disparity between yeah. where there's a wage gap between men and women, between black and white, and it's not improving with this economy, which is going down, despite the fact that they claim there's a recovery since the 2008 collapse, They've which was the worst since the. They got it down to five under five percent. Yes, now but from that's 10. Th that includes so people who don't go to, who don't apply for health insurance. People who have stopped looking for work. It's really triple that amount has in actuality. Always, has it always had those people included? When, no, when it's Obama not. Came they, in it was in the 1960s. Yeah. They had a different way of calculating unemployment. It was uh -huh. more accurate. The statistics now are less reliable and are not accurate. They don't uh -huh. reflect the actual unemployment. Uh -huh. And of course, the salaries are, are atrocious. You cannot afford to rent in in the city. I mean, up until 1980, one week's yeah. wage was one month's rent. Well, that's not the case anymore. A third of the population is spending more than half of their income on rent. Wow, is that right? That's yeah. right. Okay. And I don't think Obama improved it any because uh, when the Democrats, uh, w since he's been in power, which is now eight years, yeah. the Democrats froze Social Security three times. Obama signed legislation in October 2013 cutting food stamps. So in a place like New York, this is a very serious matter. It's a, we have a, a social welfare crisis, uh -huh. and we're not upholding the Constitution, whose very first sentence says that the government should provide for the general welfare. Well, uh -huh. it's not providing for the general welfare. Uh -huh. So we're in violation of the Constitution okay. uh, in the most broadest sense, right. in the first sentence sense, uh -huh. as well as in the particulars. Okay, we're talking now about a situation here in the year 2016, yes. which is a way it all. Uh, is it, is it, is there, is it, is it a structural flaw? Like our, our candidate, Mr. Bernie Sanders, is trying to say he wants to make a revolution. He doesn't want just another small change or something. Well, he may want a revolution. Or interest rate trend or something. He may but want a revolution, is, no, but is he's it not, first he has to become president, and well, that's yes. not likely because well, no, the no. fix is in for Hillary. No, no, the question be is before that. The question is, is the conditions right for there to be a discontent level, given the things you were laying out, to make possible a a a what's called a, 
in in seventeen the the disequilibrium the the, the disequilibrium in the in the uh, American economy and so forth between the haves and the have-nots in the United States of America. Sarah Flounders who told me this was greater than it was in seventeen eighty nine France, and in seventeen eighty nine France it it blew up. It made a big 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 thing called the French Revolution. That Bernie Sanders is talking about a revolution, not a change of a tax cut or well, an interest rate something or something like that, a normal right. functioning of the established right. uh, system, but that there are structural flaws, maybe of a historical nature, that a revolution is addressing or something along those lines. Do you think, uh, or in that sense, Mr. Trump, with what he's doing, is, is, is doing a tremendous populist thing, uh, appealing to the least advantaged people and so forth with a... Uh, with a very good song and dance and everything, the way he's coming on and everything, but that's also massive discontent, and they're both complaining about what it is and saying, "There's." Do you understand what I'm saying? Well, yes, but let me let me respond. Let me respond to what you're saying. Well, okay. In 2008, we had the worst economic collapse since the Great Depression. Right, you but are. But that d economic collapse occurred six weeks before the general election. Yeah. Up to someone, that point yeah. in time, mm -hmm. McCain was ahead. Uh -huh. Once the economy collapsed, even white racists, let's say in Texas and Pennsylvania, voted for Obama, okay? Uh, and yeah. he came in and the Democrats controlled the House and the Senate, uh -huh. all right? So the first thing, one of the first things they did was say they're going to freeze Social Security. Well, guess what? They lost the House in 2010. In 10, And, yeah. and then they lost the Senate that was in 2012. People, yeah. Well, yes, yeah. because they did not follow up on their rhetoric that they contradicted right -wing. their that rhetoric was, well yes. right, that was a right wing exit, well i'm yeah. but i'm saying yeah. the democrats controlled it when mm. they controlled it they mm. betrayed the people well, by, okay. by freezing social security and cutting food stamps let me make another intervention but let me here. let me let well, me say right, but i want another one i want to well say. i'm, okay, I'm going to say ahead, make your point yeah the point is mm -hmm. that this trump well, then we had the crisis we had what? Well, that crisis so occupy, was... We had Occupy Wall Street that spread throughout the country. Well, right? yes. Okay, <laughs> we had that. And then we had a situation where um, people are not able to find work because so many jobs are going, accelerating. The job outflow is accelerating overseas. So we have a, we have a first-rate crisis. Then we have all those police killings, which can be mortalized on cell phones. And yeah. we had the Garner case yeah. in New York. Yeah, right. Black Lives Matter. Is that the one can't breathe? And then yes. That was. And something and else, then yeah. in December, after the uh, district attorney of Staten Island said that he wasn't going to bring indictment against um, the cop, especially Pantaleo, mm -hmm. um, we had marches. Sixty thousand people marched. I marched in the street with them. I, uh, black, Latino, white, old, young. Everybody was marching, 60,000 people. We shut down the highways. We shut down the uh, bridges. We mm -hmm. shut down the tunnels because if we can't get it, we shut it down, mm -hmm. all right? And this is what we're, we're headed. We're headed. Now we you have the reaction of Trump, mm -hmm. the, the, the white supporters who feel that blacks are getting too much attention, the Fer he? Ferguson mm -hmm. phenomenon. Trump comes in. And he says, I'm going to make America great again. I'm going to do this and that. But show me his program. Show me more than well, two sentences. he knows census. how to make deals. He's going to make well, deals. Well, that's the point. He's going to make, the whole thing is ephemeral. It's, it's not substantive. It's all well, about him and nothing else. It's yeah, he's self pulling it, look at all those votes he's Yes, getting. he's pulling like all those votes in the act. Republican Party, which yeah, is a minority party at this point. He's being very successful. A couple well, things, fine. A couple and things. anything can happen to him before the election, especially after he dissed Jeb Bush. I agree with him. Jeb Bush is running a low energy campaign. Well, Jeb <laughs> that was that was extremely funny, yeah. extremely apt, and he Bush put a lot of money into it. Jeb well, of course, he was he was had raised a hundred well, million dollars. Let me ask a couple things it. now. It's a very interesting soliloquy, sir. Okay, as always, you know, you're always <laughs> well. Okay, but anyway, um, I wonder what the it was that <coughs> you were talking about. That you closed all the. Uh, I don't know what the it was. You closed all the transportation because around. of the Garner verdict in Staten oh, Island, that, which was an abomination. That's what I wanted. That to was know. an abomination. I mean, this is the only country is on the planet. Is that the one that can't breathe? Or yes, you know? that's I can't breathe. Yes, I live on Twenty Thirty Sixth Street. One night, and it came, and there was these people, and it was raining, and it was something I forget, and everything. And you know, we've been to our house. You know, it's, it's between Seventh and Eighth, big street, big half. And all of a sudden, about two in the morning or something, there came these old people. The whole damn street, all the way from Seventh to Sixth Ave, Eighth Avenue, 
was just jam-packed right, with right. people with all kinds of light and stuff and everything, and they were all saying, we can't, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. It was an incredible thing. Well, it was an incredible That's thing. You, let me refer But let me just say one thing well, okay, about the ahead. verdict. Uh -huh. This is a grand jury, and Saul Walkler, who was a judge in the state Supreme Court, famously said, a, a district attorney could indict a ham sandwich. Oh, uh, yeah. Because there's no lawyer present, he presents all the evidence before a bunch of people who decide whether they should bring indictment or not bring indictment. Yeah. Now, Donovan refused to re release the transcript. And the racists out in Staten Island and elsewhere put him in Congress, where he is right now. Okay? That's an important point to make. But no. the grand jury, uh -huh. the only country, and only English-speaking country in the world that has a grand jury is the United States. Mm -hmm. Ireland doesn't have it. New Zealand doesn't have it. Does England doesn't have it. States? Australia. It says pretty much that it's a militarized police state. That's what it says, because he went with the cops. And everybody who saw that video who's saw he now? You, you're jumping Donovan, Donovan, Don, Donovan, Donovan. Donovan. Donovan was the DA of Staten Island. Oh, I had no idea who Donovan was. Well, he, he won the race later on. Oh. But the day after the verdict occurred, there was tr this tremendous 60,000 people marching. That's a lot of people. That was a lot of people, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, but back again to a historical sweep of everything. Uh, one of the, there, there was another. Pr uh, Mr. Obama came in, and when you do you ever see that movie? What's the what's the movie? Um, Too big to fail. Well, that's what Eric Holder. Sorkin that, put it together. Right? Eric Holder, his his attorney general, who's no longer the attorney general, famously said about the banks and not indicting any bankers. They're too big to fail. Yeah, well, I'm talking about the movie. I mean, well, I'm uh, talking, I didn't see the movie. I didn't see the movie, well, but I know what Holder did. Okay. He didn't indict a single banker. Okay, and the only right. reason why Bernie Madoff, Madoff with rich people's cash, <laughs> that's that's the pun. That's a good line. Somebody should pick well, up I, on you that. Know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to be funny. I'm, no, I'm trying to make a joke once well, in a while. Because this is a very serious matter. Serious than serious. No, I understand that. Yeah. I could, But I'm not... Uh, the, the point is, he went to jail because he ripped off rich people. Mm -hmm. You had to have a million bucks to open an account with the guy. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the one guy that well, went. Well, anyway, he, back to Mr. Obama coming in into that yeah. and Boy, he walked into a thing. It was amazing. The whole damn thing blew up and everything. And y the movie, see, it, I don't think there's much point in trying to think about anything that's written down on paper anymore. Everything's in the media. Everything is the movie. So you got to think about one movie to another movie in order to get a sense of the historical development. I watch the old As movies. A, uh, well, Ingrid Bergman or whatever happened to Myrna Loy, I tell you. And the comedies like were much anymore. better. My yeah, favorite anyway. comedy. Right, that's just My Man Godfrey. Yeah, my favorite. Know. That's just an old time <laughs> kind of well, thing. But they're very good. They're very well written. Yeah, but I didn't. I, I had a point I was trying to make, right? And I don't know what it is, but the movies, every Too there is progress. Fail. There's progress being made in a certain way. And it was the point being, 2008, they had that thing, and he had to. And and in the movie, and it's depicted as Sorkin's a great film director and writer and everything. And in the movie, and it's depicted so well. And it was uh, it was in the election. There was the election coming, and McCain was there. And then they had the Republicans, they had the Democrats. And you remember, it was, I've got the date, September 20, because I wrote a little thing about it. September 20, they came up, they came up with um, what was at play in the Congress and everything, all the big banks and everything were on a total alert. It was like a, a real dramatic, I mean, the, the movie was depicting a real situation that was really, really hairy, as they say in the vernacular. Mm -hmm. But anyway, he had, um, he, he, they had a three-page thing, and this is Mr. Paulson. And Mr. Paulson is depicted by all good acting, and this actually happened. He had a three-page thing, and the, there was a little bit of a group, I'm not sure it was in the Treasury or whatever, a, 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 no, a big group of Republicans representing the Republican Party, McCain mm -hmm. and all that, at one end, and then there was another one at the other end where they were the Democrats were over there. But these guys on the, on the, uh, at the eye of the storm, and they had a three-page thing, and it had to, and he came in, and he couldn't get anywhere with the Republicans or anything, and Mr. Paulson. And he came into, and it's a famous scene, he came into where the Democrats were caucusing, as it were, not the whole Congress, but a whole bunch of them and everything. And Nancy Pelosi was there. And he got down on one knee, <laughs> like, ha like uh, something out of Shakespeare. And he said, and this three-page thing had to be signed by the Congress by the next day or two days and on the desk of the president so it could be signed before the end of the week or the whole 
international monetary the whole economic system of the world would fall completely apart well i was pretty dramatic stuff he may say that the question is whether he was being truthful no he did it well that's another issue but that's getting to another point and what he did and it was necessary at that stage to avoid what would be called an absolute anarchistic obliteration of the whole economic order on a world mm-hmm. scale. This was the premise that was being put forward. Which totally now, nuts. And they had to save capitalism. That's fear. They had to save capitalism or else the whole world... You know world. how they saved so capitalism? By just, investing in China. Well, that's, how. well that's another issue. That's but, a side China issue. was not affected. I was reading, uh, again, the, the book by um, Timothy Geithner. He was the one who was behind all that. It's called Stress Test, and it's about that. And they're making the claim. They saved the system, and they had to do trillions to the banks. And That's all false. No, That's no, a false claim. I'm making a point. Yeah. So this is the th- premise. You can say the premise doesn't hold, but that's another. But the major task of the responsible leadership of the world at that time was to save capitalism. Okay? That was the major thing that had to do. If it didn't do it, it would fall apart in un- uncontrollable anarchy, which would be disaster. Okay? That's the point. Now, there was another person who did that in the history of the United States. His name was Franklin Roosevelt. He did a lot of things in the 30s when we had what we called the Great Depression, as you record from the history books. I unfortunately can remember from my actual birth date, but in any event, uh, in actual term, but I was only in a crib when he did it. But he saved capitalism in, 19, uh, in the 1930s and that, and that's what he was rewarded for over the long haul, not to mention the WPA and the other kinds of things he did to may do I, some may help. I, may I interject but here? Do you think it's true that as he celebrated, Mr. Roosevelt, for saving capitalism? Obama, a Democrat, a progressive, is, 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 is heralded for saving capitalism. Now, there's a lot of people on the left who think sa- capitalism shouldn't be saved. It should be allowed to be right. strangled um, in its own okay. uh, thing. So do you think that's, uh, how do you deal with that as a uh, way of seeing the recent history? We have to save capitalism and to talk about um, it would be an absolute dis- disarray following also, remember Mr. Perot saying that no, well, let's, let's, let's just deal but with that the, premise. Let's just deal with that Obama premise. Do you and think FDR we have to, Do we have to save it then? Do we have to make sure that it's saved now? Or what are the options open All to right, us let me, let me just, under those let me just comment. Okay, because good. the banks were irresponsible in the 20s, they mm-hmm. took the money and run to mm-hmm. borrow from uh, yeah. Danny DeVito. Yeah. We, in 1933... Danny DeVito? Who, what movie was that? Take the Money and Run, wasn't oh, it? Oh, that was... A, now we're back to film. Now we're getting down no, but to where let me, the real let me, record let me is Let me respond to your points, okay, Harold. Okay. okay. Yeah, good. 1933, mm. the Congress passed the Glass-Steagall Act, yeah. which created a barrier between commercial banking and... Uh, the average person's deposit. Clinton did that in 99. And Clinton took it away. In 99. That's correct, with uh-huh. Robert Rubin, who he yeah. compared right. to the best Secretary of the Treasury since Alexander Hamilton. Yeah, right. Clinton <laughs> will say anything. Yeah. And guess what? Mm-hmm. The repercussions, the consequences, was the collapse in 2008 mm-hmm. of the well. banks and the subprime and, and, and trying to blame it on the housing crisis. That was part of it. But the banks took the money and run, and mm-hmm. guess what? Those are symptoms. That, what happened? No, that was actual what happened. That oh, wasn't I a symptom. That, that was a okay. disease at that point. Having the fact that was but done. Also, okay, but also, Bush, premise I Bush bailed out the banks in September, and Obama came in, in office, and he did the same thing. Well, he gave I'm them more money. Exactly. There's, there's that no difference. That's something that had to happen. You had to save capitalism. Do we have to in this Excuse me. We're not the only capitalist country on the planet. Well, right, the United amazing. States produces a minority of manufacturing goods. Well, it's, got ver- it's very powerful. You had to save the American economy, yes, and perhaps the British economy that's tied to it. But China is not tied to it. Well, if the American And China economy- is producing more manufactured goods since... 2005 than the United States. And American capitalists are not patriots. If you want to talk about saving jobs and bringing the jobs back to America, this empty rhetoric of Donald Trump, the point is that all the jobs have moved abroad because of the growth and and technology. We're the, where the revolution well, has been is in technology. To, yeah, well, then we're getting to something else, that there are tides in history and so <coughs> forth that go beyond the immediate and the kind of media politics. And we were in that kind of a situation then 
in uh, in 1930s and everything, and we're in that now. But the point Except is, Roosevelt didn't save capitalism. He well, he did not save capitalism. Well, that's what he gets credit for. No, but then that's people who don't know the history. Perhaps tell okay. me, fill me I'll in. I'll tell you. That's World part War of the, II. Mm. World War II got us out of the depression. Well, all right. Because back in 37, 38, there was a, a decline again in the economy. The jobless rate rose to 15 percent after being at 25 percent, mm -hmm. and World War II gave full-time jobs and brought women in massive numbers into the labor market. And by 1944, at the height of the Second World War, new U.S. unemployment was one half of one yeah. percent, the lowest it's ever been in the modern industrial well, the era. Well, the war, yeah, war is the great. War, no, the no. war, Dr. New Deal was taken off the case and Dr. Win the War was brought in. Well, that's I, what no, did I it understand. historically. Yeah, but that's true. But if, you, if it had fallen apart in utter anarchistic array, disarray, in 1930, there would have been no ability to pull but that off. But it wasn't off. going he to. Saved the, you're, you're avoiding the issue, which is okay if you want. I'm not avoiding the issue. What to, saved capitalism? The larger issue is, is capitalist something that has to be saved? Is it then? Is it now? The point is most of the world is capitalist, including China right. and Russia, right. former communist states. Okay. But during the 1930s, Stalin instituted the five-year plans so that yeah. Russia industrialized, Soviet Union industrialized at a faster rate in history in the three five-year plans I know, so they, that it was prepared for the Second World War. They so took there a was terrible a lot loss else. in the there Second was, World War. There, yes, Awful. but they 30 won. 30 million people. That's correct. Yeah. But the, the bottom line is they won. Yeah. They drove the... And we won. They drove the... Well, sort of. The, the outcome of the war was not what we anticipated. We anticipated that the Germans and the Russians would kill each other off. Harry Truman made a very, very famous speech in, mm -hmm. on the floor of the Senate, in which he said he hoped that would happen, which is why he was made the vice president in 1944. No, I didn't because, know mm -hmm. because the Red Army, which they, which they, you know, it's essentially, um, obviously, the, 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 the Russians are Slavs and the Germans are Teutons. So it was a racial thing. Ex exactly. Yeah, you got that's it. Same old okay. Yeah. So anyway, the Red Army not only beat mm. Germany on yep. Russian soil, yeah. specifically yeah. the high point of the fighting, if you want to call it, the Wh greatest which loss, was? Stalingrad. Stalingrad was right, incredible. In 40, turning 43. Point. Absolutely. But meanwhile, the United States is in North Africa protecting British oil interests in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Eisenhower wanted to go in in 43. Instead, we went in 44. At that point, the Red Army was marching through yeah. Eastern Europe okay. and took over half of Germany. Okay. So the outcome was precisely the opposite what these planners in D.C. were thinking of. These are Same details. thing happened yeah. in China. These are the details coming. of reading a good historical but reading these are not of the details. This is fundamentals. No, they're details of, what they're fundamentals of who won and who lost. No, they're not. They're details Chinese of how communism you won that. in 49, Soviet communism beat fascism, which had been built up by the Bushes, the Rockefellers, mm -hmm. the DuPonts yeah. in the 30s. There's plenty of historical evidence how the United States corporations were, were, and Ford, there was a picture of Ford on Hitler's wall in his office. So when you walked into Hitler's office, you saw a picture of Henry Ford. That's from, where the CEOs, yeah. that's where the so-called giants of American corporations uh, put their money on. They put their money on Hitler, and they lost big time. And then That's we had right. the Cold War. Yeah, I know. And it, I, I was from Detroit. You know, I told you that, right? My, right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, <coughs> my grandmother, who was the first woman ever to graduate from the University of Michigan Medical College, broke the glass ceiling. Worst steely stuff, the Channers. Uh, well, anyway, Henry Ford, she lived down on 16th Street, and Henry Ford, when he was a lad of about eight years old, tinkered in their garage before he got going and everything like that. Right. But I'm saying, what you're bringing up the details, which any specialization in anything... Well, this is not you, the details. No, you, These the, are the fundamentals, no, I'm Harold. trying to pose something These to, are fundamentals. I'm trying to pose a question to you that is not... Inter, not, in, in, not It's built upon, yeah. but it's, not, it's a qualitative thing, not a quantitative thing. And that is, um, are, is are we at a time that is, uh, oh, let's just back off a little bit now, okay, if we can, okay? And then we will, and look at big patterns of sweep of history. I guess the science is telling us uh, that we're here as a species about 200,000 years, right? I think there's pretty much agreement on that. I got about 10,000 generations. I think it's pretty clear that we're all out of Africa. We understand? We yes, understand? yes, yes. And, oh, we understand we evolved. We're on an evolving process. And we put on, on close 70,000 years ago. And we put okay. on, um, and, okay, no, just to get the, the, <laughs> no, the, 
I'm trying to get a big picture, not just the details. Well, I'm telling you. Okay, there's <laughs> details in all of that, you know, Cro-Magnon Cave. Uh, right, right. right. Neanderthals. Whatever. Right, right. But anyway, do this. so we get down, and so we're wandering around in the wilderness for the most time. I don't probably... Montague wrote well on the need for pair bonding because of the infancy was so of the homo. I mean, the pair bonding was really of uh, uh, essential to the 99.999 percent of all species that have ever existed have gone extinct. Okay? Sure, we may be on the verge of going well, extinct. Well, if we don't, oh no, uh, that's what I'm trying to get at. That kind of thing, that we're not in a normal phase, like a phase of history, like the French Revolution or something. No, because that, technology is taking yeah, away jobs. And well, you're, now and, you're trying to get and to George, a Excuse me. Now George Bush, with his Iraq war, mm. created ISIS. And that point I agree well, with Trump. Well, that was also Hillary Clinton's war. She that's wanted correct. to go. Both yeah, of them. That was the worst that, mistake that, in the modern... But well, that's a detail of what I'm trying to get at. But it's created that's the fundamental detail. crisis okay, no, of Islamic no, fundamentalism well, and not, ISIS okay. going all over the... I'm trying to suggest there isn't one just thing... Just today, they blew up uh, the uh, Br know, Brussels three, airport. I'm, I know, I saw that. Yeah, but those are details of the <laughs> way it's it goes. Fundamental no, but you, okay, just go real quick. So you got there, 10,000 generations, 20 years, yeah. more or less a generation. And uh, we come, uh, then once they get to the Neolithic and you got food source, you can begin to have civilization, you know, wheat and barley and rice and corn and uh, another you have one. civilization when you no, occupy you river valleys because the rivers move away the waste. Well, no, you get a food source from yes. the food quest, which is an essential thing. You don't have to find carrion or a beehive or something to survive. No, we were kitty. hunters and gatherers. Yes, for, for, nine, the most for, of, for most for of the history. For 180,000 right, right, years right. or so, anyway. And so, anyway, the point being is we got civilization. Once we got civilization, we had a few people running everything. Nebuchadnezzar and, and uh, what do you call it, uh, the uh, guy in... Uh, Egypt, uh, the what, is, what do you call the head of Egypt? The, the pharaoh. The pharaoh, and that, and then you get to Rome. You got make Caesar. like an Egyptian. You got yeah, and you got these people <laughs> where you have a few people in charge. They run everything, and everyone else are like. Yeah, search. that's because some people Can get I make the a most point? land. I'm trying to get to a point. Mm -hmm. I'll right, get out to of point. the way. Okay. It, it, so you get that, and then after Rome fell for for a thousand years in Western Europe, anyway, political legitimacy was established by what they called royal families. They had these royal families, that's how it was done, and it was a matter of who had the biggest club, could hit the other on the head. It's no, called who had real the most land? Well, land, but no, it's who had the weaponry to assert themselves well, of with a club, and it's called real politics, it's being realistic, not uh, you know idealistic. You had that, that was political legitimacy was based on that. Then the Enlightenment came, right, finally, and then these people over in you know, North America set up a system based on the Enlightenment and everything like that, and really angered a lot of the, the families in Europe, did they not? No, I don't uh, think so, because the Enlightenment they was came based and, on they came and slavery for Africans and, and Latinos. For our having set up a system in advance historically. There's a historical advancement that's moving along through all of history, and it comes and it goes. So now we've come to a point where we set up a system here. We've got a constitution. We've got a system. It's all based within a materialistic world of scarcity in a certain sense. If you measure scarcity by our total capability to provide for everybody in a way which we're never provided for. The kings lived in castles on golden plates, and the people wallowed around in the mud. And the serfs and tilled the, serf the soil and had enough to eat. Now yeah. we've reached a lot of the point they didn't have enough. I the understand point that, but and the we're still in that kind of a world. It's we're worse now because we don't need all these people to produce. Well, now you're getting down to Thomas Piketty and some of the things that the people oh. are really reading now. Because the, the, the I don't have to read Thomas Piketty to know that. No, but he's making that point in the, the point. in the halls of Congress and the halls of decision making by the major political decision. So the point being is we're coming into a point. The the technology is more it's going exponential in information and it's it's migrating over into robotics and people are becoming in a very real sense in many sub areas, particularly systems wide, not even needed in the productive That's process correct. of a massive capability to provide everything for everybody in an unprecedented way with an ecological context, but, but they don't have the means of getting all demand right, Harold, may I by say power one word? into the hands of it's the a people it's a matter to clear of, the market. So in Austria, they give people a salary so they can buy the goods. In well, other words, everybody a has a minimum. A salary is a thing uh, Shall we say a minimum income? Excuse me, well, I, I misspoke. Well, that's different because you wanted... I understand you, that. Well, I let misspoke. Let me finish the point, but I've almost done it. I've, I've finished. 
it, what it is sure. is the left has been based upon the labor theory of value. People's identity is wrapped up in the fact that they have a function that they do that they get pride and identity from. All of these things are being undercut. Are we coming to a point of qualitative transformation That's in possible. evolutionary terms? We have a capability of destroying the entire species with the weapons okay. that have built up in the name of realpolitik or power. And on the other side, we have a technologically augmented, expanding capability of providing everything and all the things for everybody and the ecology that's equally there in capability, but we don't have a system of allowing the capability to realize or birth itself because the people don't have enough way of getting income to buy what can be produced. That's picketty. But and well, that we don't have, we need a new right. totally uh, economic system. May I system. say a few words since I guess this and is... And that, that, would, no, that would just, that's it. We'd, we'd set it we, we can liberate Harold, the human... Harold, it's a problem of ownership, production, and distribution. Wait a minute, now you it's said a, a bunch of words. You Excuse me, no, that's, that's the basis, that's the basis Those are, well, those are words that we're uh, no, spelling out No, political economy. Yeah. Distribution. <clears throat> no person should have a 118-room house like Donald Trump has. And he inherited the money from his father, and his wife bought the plaza, and they, they, he, she made the money, and he invested in casinos. He's a failure as a businessman. He's on TV, so he fools a lot of people. Okay. Yeah, but that's I, outside of the larger issue. Well, wait a minute. He's think? running for office. He's ahead of the Republican Party. I'm almost. Let me make two minutes. Okay. Do you no. think the assertion I just <laughs> put out? Okay, I'm talking big. I'm, I'm talking to think, bigger. No, I'm trying to think big. <laughs> well, maybe. But anyway. The assertion I put out, this is something that can be measured. It's, I'd like it if somebody could present chapter and verse. But I do believe that the weapons systems that have been the basis of political legitimacy in the history of the civilized world was whoever had the political power to uh, intimidate, conquer, and so forth, did, and set up entities, that those weapons systems, you kill a few Indians, you had more Gatling guns or whatever, dreadnoughts, but th those weapons have finally, in their capability, become with um, the nuclear and the something, you know, the, 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 that, that the weapons that exist in their capabilities to destroy humanity, uh, uh, human life, that they are such, if they were unleashed in a spasm of hatred as they have been throughout most of human history, that they would, uh, they would kill every single human being on the planet, that that is the modeling that is there, existent on the tridents and other submarines floating in the depths. I know that, nuclear winter. It, no, not nuclear winter's another thing. Then nuclear winter's another thing. Well, you wipe thing. out all the people. No, they would have, if, they were un, if they were unleashed, everybody would, every, the homo sapiens species would cease to exist. They would all be That's killed. That's possible. Well, right no, now not we have possible. The, the modeling right, can show, do you I'm think the modeling shows that? We couldn't do it in the Second World War, right? I'm talking to get a historical perspective. Well, I'm telling you, we have, a, we have the missiles. Time. Excuse me, we have nuclear missiles. It's a balance of terrifically no, we destructive have power between the Soviet Union and the United States. That remains the same. No, collectively. It's no longer the Soviet Union, it's Russia. It's a question of state power and state competition No, still. it's a straight of collective capability of the homo sapien species But to only certain people, so only certain countries have nuclear weapons. No, no, I, okay. Only certain <coughs> countries have nuclear I'm weapons. I'm making a point. The collective capability, not talking about the reality, you're talking about the capability well, that exists. Reality. I'm a historian. On, that exists now, they exist. They're in the ocean deeps. They're there, they're, they're, they're yes, triggered. Yes. They're there. And somebody happens, they almost did it down in, in the Caribbean once where there was a mistake or something. Right. If the weapons go, and we can't stand it, and they can't stand it, and they let it off, and the others do, they got 200,000 of those in Pakistan now, and they're all over the place. The weapons of destruction, are so intimidating that they can eliminate the entire Homo sapiens species well, agree, in their course. capability. We know that. No, we, we don't know that. If they we don't know that. They should make that available to well, the people. That that's they, the no, reality. Why should they make that available to the people when they're controlling it and they don't want to well, now have you're the people organize? They way. don't want to have the people organize against this, so they keep it quiet. Well, wait, Just like wait. Indian Point, 25 miles up the Hudson. If there's a big leak there, it can eliminate New I'm York population. I'm going to talk about that on another well, program. Well, I'm just saying, I'm about. just saying, you ask people on the street, you know about Indian Point? Oh, isn't that a new dance? Mm. Or is that a new candy bar? Uh, they don't know what, what is Indian... What is it? Is it a candy bar or a dance? It's a nuclear power plant, I as know. you know. I'm just well, you know, but I'm very few people for, know this. That's, that's what the young people call putting but you Excuse on. me, there's no educational system here mm. that speaks to the general welfare. Uh. It appeals to a tiny minority of parasitic predators who are d 
making this city unlivable. That's why I ran for mayor in 2005 and 2013. Mm -hmm. And in 2013, I had a much better response. I raised $1,000. And I didn't miss a day of work. Uh -huh. I came in fourth. But I didn't have the $8 million that de Blasio had. He had more than the other 13 candidates, 14 candidates. Trump's got tens and tens of millions. Fine. He's got he, a big airplane. says I, Trump. I know that. He flies in everywhere. Here comes Trump. I under, and, and, Did I, I make and, the note that... And, and Obama had one, too, that said change on it, the same size when he ran for office. Yeah, but he's got a name. Do you play bridge? No, I don't play bridge. I love bridge. Bridge is a great game. You know the bidding in bridge? That's fine. I, no, this is something that may be relevant. <laughs> this is something that may be relevant because, you know, no, you no, you, no. Die, you got clubs, spade, dime, you know, and then you bid one or two over six and everything, and then you bid. And the, high, the bid, it, the, you can bid, then there's Trump. Okay? Trump. Yeah, we had Reagan. His name now we have is Trump. not even Trump. It's Trump. Well, no, no, I know we here. had Reagan. Now we have Trump. No, but I'm trying to say something that could be relevant to the public relations industry out there or the no, people. No, I'm talking politics. I came on the program well, to that's talk politics. Sort of a sidebar thing from the I politics. I want to talk about politics no, and okay. power. Well, We're talking no. about the election. I'm trying that's to get. I, 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 you're stepping all over my lines. Okay. <laughs> And um, the thing is that in bridge, when you bid, you bid, you're going to make so many tricks and everything. The, it, the Trump is a thing, you have four Trump or something like that. But higher than Trump, you know what's higher than Trump in the bidding? It's more dangerous. Higher than Trump beats Trump is no Trump. That's a bit. That's well, a, you know, maybe somebody's my thinking mother, of that. And my I'm, mother, I was, my mother, God bless her, the best mother in the history of the universe. And I was with my sister and her, and we played, and I bid. I, our friend, our Josiane, who's taping with us now, she's mm -hmm. a real affectionate. I bid seven no Trump, doubled and redoubled and made it. Terrific. That's like an incredible thing. No Trump is a better than uh, and no, I Trump. I haven't read Pickett. And he comes and you, in, and they I, should I have a thing, play, no Trump. Don't. But um, it's just a sidebar thing. And I don't play bridge. But the thing okay. is, I'm saying if the... <laughs> I don't get the it, illusion. I can't... You don't... <laughs> Trump comes with no, a, I he's understand. Got a big, big I, airplane. Trump. I, I said, and Obama had change on his, so there's nothing, nothing really different there. But this is something that could be worked into the current. Well, I don't, you know, the point is he's not, he may make it, and that'll help Hillary get in, because Bernie, the fix is in for Hillary Clinton. That's all. And she'll have it. And uh, she voted for the Iraq War, as you pointed Unless out correctly. Unless something happens. That, is there any chance that this thing could happen? that uh, I, I'm looking at the news, CNN, they do it 24 hours a day and everything, mm -hmm. and it looks like it, do, do you think there's any chance there could be a real, like 1789 in France, there was a real... No chance. No, no. 1789 in France, they made a revolution. I know they made a revolution. That was a major that change. Okay. Happen here, do you Howard. think that could happen here? That there not would for be, a no, while. Would be, not for a while. Well, all right. I'm asking you whether you think it could, because that's almost what would be. But both, but Mr. B Bernie is saying that's exactly he wants to have not just a little change, not just the changing of the guard at the FT, uh, Federal Reserve or something, or some individualized kind of thing or something. But we need a revolutionary uh, impetus like Occupy, sort of like or something, an impetus that would enthuse the entire population. It looks like all of the youth is in favor of this guy. Well, 84% okay? of, of people under 30 mm. who vote Democratic favor Sanders. Well, that's all right. Because this generation is the second generation in a row whose parents did better than their children. Well, I don't know why, but I mean... It's well, why? Because the jobs went abroad, thanks to the capitalist yeah, class now, here. all of the details are not the thing I'm, I'm saying. How do you get to the thing where there would be a real... What I'm trying to say, it seems unlikely, but it may be that there's going to be uh, a, 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 an unprecedented kind of thing sweep this country and therefore the world Given the, anti the world, given the United the States is not the world. The United no, States is four percent of the world's yeah, population. Okay, but no, but okay, I understand that. But that that this would be a time when you get to where you can you. We have a capability of taking care of everybody that I we've agree never with had. You. I agree with so you. you. It's you, a question it's, of distribution, uh, no. and it's a question of greed at the top. Well, now do you want to keep the greed thing and the greed? No, I don't want to um, keep the greed. Greed, thing. greed is, is part the, of. 
Greed well, I don't is, know. Greed is part of the uh, evolutionary process. I think you know. It's you have addiction. To eat. People are addicted to their things, and they get more addicted. Not only their things, but they're they're addicted to uh, you know survival of the fittest is what Mr. No. Darwin said. You'd better get some. You better get some milk, or if you have to, you have to steal it well, or whatever to me, your Harold, baby. It's if a you're going to matter of distribution. It's been a hard struggle. Distribution all is a matter of evolution. Of evolution power. is all that. Survival of the fittest. It's tough. And now we're down to a point where maybe you think Jeb Bush is fit. Jeb Bush is the ex is the governor of California. He's sort no, of Jeb out of Bush it now. Jeb Bush is the what about was Jeb the ex governor of Florida yeah, who helped his yeah. brother become president. Yeah, okay. he's running. He was now running Jeb for Bush, president. Yeah. The one thing I agree with Don, Donald Trump <laughs> is that Jeb Bush <coughs> was low energy, and people want a high energy person yeah, Trump who's very confident. angry who manages to channel the anger. And in this case, the anger of white privilege, where the whites are feeling. It's not only that, white privilege. Well, if I may, it's not only white back, privilege. There's also white. a lot of people who feel very, very not privileged. But they at are all, white, my and friend. And they're going to blame it on the fact that the, de the people who are fiddling around in the White House now while the b country burns, it don't know how to make a deal. The See, point is, the president man. is he's black. He's going to make good deals. The president and make is black, work. and this is a reaction. Oh, that's true too. That's, that's right. Racism and, and is there. That yeah. racism is ugly. Uh, but well, the racism point is endemic to American society. But that's how it's think, founded: slavery, you, you piracy, and drugs. You agreed with me, or I think that has to be chapter and verse from somewhere. I would like to get it better and everything. But it's there that the weapons are they can measure. It's a matter of kilotons. This, but, but we know they can this. measure we that they would wipe out. Now it may not be; it's a big earth, but that, that, but it, it seems on you. We couldn't do it as recently as the Korean War, even that recent in terms of evolution. That we were born into the defining generation of ten thousand generations of qualitative, not just quantitative, crime up uh, the hill, but qualitative transformation akin to the whole process right now, of things punctuated equilibrium and yes. evolution no, itself. Not that punctuated. Oh no, why not? Because the to qualitative me that's a, change. Qualitative change is not happening. What's happening we're now? We're in the womb. We're about to We're in the disintegration. Womb. Social disintegration globally well, let's hope not. because of the well, you, because it's a matter of political will. It's a matter of distribution. It's a matter of channeling the resources and equally, more equally, distributing the products of society okay. so that everybody shares. Okay, well, now, but how? But we don't have that today. But what? Here. What? Uh, we have greed is good, and that's Trump. Well, greed has been good for evolution. No, it hasn't. We've survived. Survived. You could have survived much better with much less misery. Ninety-nine point nine 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 all uh, well, uh, that have gone of extinct. That's not surviving. It's a question. You had to what what drives history forward is class conflict. Okay. Well, you're talking about it in a smaller scale. I'm, I'm not talking. I'm talking on a grand okay. scale. No, it's a those who have scale, or, no. who have and own the means of production versus those who work. It's too narrow. What do you mean narrow? Most well, of it's all owned by everyone in my class is a student working a couple of jobs. In, 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 most, in just a pr practically every case, yeah. and they are not allowed to have the time to study. When I went to school, I didn't work, okay? Because education was much freer, city university was free. Yeah. I went to a private university with fellowships galore, and that was the situation. Now, okay. Harold, student debt exceeds credit debt. That is criminal. That is criminal. Yeah. There's more than a trillion dollars worth of student debt. Yeah, all right. I know it's all. And this is to this country Never is about slavery. About yeah. Chattel slavery yeah. got it started you know, in Virginia me of that. with I tobacco. Know it's it was replaced by wage slavery, and now it's replaced by debt slavery. James it's Joy all about slavery. James Joyce had a great saying. He said, "History is a nightmare." One could add of injustice. It's always been unjust. It's been we unjust don't have because we, now. Well, now is it possible we have a capability of having a truly evolutionarily considered element? But you have to element, sit down uh, no, and analyze this scientifically planner, and yeah, structurally. Well, I'm trying to, but I don't. But not think all the politicalized thing that we now maybe have a capability of actually blowing in the wind. Bobby Dylan said a long time ago, and the the dating of these things, the destructiveness and the possibility of a capability of providing. Cornucopia to everybody. That's 
Conce now, wait a minute. That's idealistic. But That's we have idealistic. the capability. We have the capability. Have the Therefore, capability. it's not idealistic. So we, no, no. It's a no. matter of distribution. We didn't have the capability in the 1900s. I said we have the distribution no, now. Not, we have the... We don't have the distribution. Excuse we don't me. Have we, have, we have the system. We have the system. We have the capability to do okay, that Okay, big now. difference between capability and realizing that capability. Well, of it's, course. It's, it's a question of political in, will. In climatology, it's a you have question. latent heat. Let's it's just released. stick to politics. Well, no, no, no. I don't want to stick to politics. Well, that's why I'm here so to talk about no, the 2016 election. No, we're talking about the election. UN condition. Politics <laughs> is one small part of the human or the evolutionary process. But power. And that's that's that tunnel vision. We don't want to talk politics about that. Politics is power. About crocheting. Who, excuse me, Harold. Politics is power. I know. Who gets what and how? That's politics I in know. the simplest terms. I know. It's so, a basic. So what, what? So what is maybe needed in order to realize the core? We have an ability uh, on that thinking, and it's really, I think, true. We have the ability to liberate, in the fullest sense of the word, the human s society that has never been, and the capability, the knowledge base. It's growing exponentially. The capability of providing. Okay, doing more with less. We know Good this. design. We know, you already said That's this. a capability. Co but end with destroying it all. We've not had the capability at either side until our lifetime. It never was. It couldn't do it in the First World War. Couldn't do it in the Second World War. Couldn't do it even in the second. You know, until about 1970. Our generation. No, it was 1963 in the nu nuclear missile crisis. 1962. Well, 62, excuse me. Yeah, 62. Cuba. Yes. Yeah, but that's yes. a detail. But we didn't reach speed. Detail. We came very close to we blowing, uh, having a nuclear yeah, war well, between the U.S. and the Soviet Union. Even by the, by the best research about the destruction, since that's something you can put up on a, on a chart and everything, we didn't really reach it. We would have been maybe a few straggling survivors somewhere if it had gone off there from Cuba. Maybe there'd be a few scraggling survivors. The species but we can would thank still be John there. F. Kennedy for, but, for preventing this. But the thing is, we didn't reach species lethality in terms of the capability. And then we had start and other things. So maybe everybody thinks everything okay. We got over that, so we're safe. No, excuse me. The U.S. was defeated in Vietnam, so therefore the U.S. had to regroup and bring in Japan and bring in yeah, Europe yeah. and the Trilateral Commission. Yeah, the Trilateral. Yeah. Run by David Rockefeller. Yeah, right, okay? right, right. That's right. they they were defeated in Vietnam because both the Korean it was horrible. War, both the Korean War and the Four Vietnam War, bef both the Korean War and the Vietnam War was all about containing China and the peasant communist George, revolution. Thank you, George. Because both of those countries, both of those countries border China. And we were testing I know. China's and it was all capabilities. Based, it was all based on George Kennan and, and Vietnam. And we dropped but more bombs mm. in Vietnam yeah. than all the wars in history, Harold, than all the wars in history. I know. 14 and a half million tons, uh -huh. and the U.S. lost the war. Mm -hmm. And that was a defining moment in terms of how the United States is going to deal with the rest of the world. Yeah, okay. And then that's again. with the Trilateral Commission. And therefore, they they went into the Middle East to control the energy supplies. I knew, I knew that there were a lot of good people in the Trilateral Commission. There were a lot of Charles Heck, and there was a lot of good thinking people. There were, I've done programs with them. They're they're thinking. They're trying to think things through. People, we're all caught up in it. It's not as though it's somebody. Uh, you know, it's 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 a thing of uh, you know, it's a thing of um, of uh, of in it, it's that. The uniqueness of the time is what ought to be brought up, and we have the capability of provide a, a cornucopia. Can you imagine a world where everybody has what they need or reasonably want and are able to have a point? We know that's possible. Like we just went over this ten minutes ago. Jams. Everybody's realizing their full potential. Uh, Thirty-seven trillion cells in a human organism. Mm -hmm. Thirty. Yeah, right, I did thirty-seven trillion cells mm -hmm. in a human organism, more or less. And they all matter. Every single cell matters, and they work as a system. Suppose you got humanity, what, 10 billion we're going for or something? Then let's suppose let's they're all not. working well, and they're working in a synergistic way, in touch with, in a way to liberate everything. Then what you would have would be like a gigantic jam session. Unfortunately, you have rich with people everybody the hitting show. high, Everybody hitting their, their full capability rather than so truncated that they've had to do by issue of the fact where we were evolutionary. Suppose we get to that. There would be a residency, like a jam session with our Louis Armstrong hitting high C 
at the, you know, you ever see a jam session, a real jam session? You, they, and they go, and, and that will, that resonancy will inter-accommodate us in string yeah, theory but that's to all universe very, at a level transcendent. That's all very mystical, but yeah, it's, not, not mystical. it's not at all practical. Not a, it is, no, it's, I would admit, it's not practicality is not as Trump suit not, in thinking that way. No, but, it, but I'm just saying, yes, that, that would be that wonderful. But that seems to I'm be the order it, in which we I were born. But I don't see it when I look around. No, 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 but it's, okay. uh, but there is something to be said for that. But anyway, so I don't know. And back to the regular old politics and everything that's going on, and everything. And um, I don't can know. always vote for Jill Stein on the Green Party. Thank I you. That's what I asked you before. You, what did you? You ran for mayor. I ran for mayor in the Green. Well, and Colia Clark ran. Right. And Jill for, Stein. Uh, right. J Jill Stein ran for president in 2012. She's right. running. She's a pediatric doctor, pediatrician. Right. right. And she's, she's running again, hip. and uh, she's running again uh, this year. Was Nader but most ever people involved don't. with the Greens? Nader, Nader ran Ralph in '96 as that's Green. He ran as an uh, as independent, as an, yeah, not uh, the Green, yeah, not in '96. Wasn't and that's there somebody why, uh, before yes, Jill? Yes, he ran. He ran in '96 yeah. as a Green. That's why I joined the Green Party. Yeah, and ran for state assembly. That's I what was I inspired by yeah. Ralph Nader. He, he, he ran again in 2000 guy. and 2004. And the General Motors tried everything in their power to destroy the guy. They set him up with women. They analyzed his tax return. Wouldn't if he, he had something to say about that? He did. He has it. But you but don't I mean, get publicity. But I mean, when the lady comes running up to you, you don't have but to say yes. You do not have to say yes, But the publicity is what you've got to be in mass media. Harold, I just you have made to a be, joke. I know. I, you uh, have to be in the mass media mm, to carry it out, mm, like Trump. People know Trump because he's on the TV. Yeah. Okay. That's hey, he's why. got a personality. He was in. A, he had a reality show, and his personality uh, is like. I think that's what I really like because he's not got all the bullet points. He's just winging it. Yeah, exactly. He's just coming up because there, most and people, he's winging it. Because and of the lousy education it. system in this country, which we were ranked thirty-fourth, he can get away with it. Because he can't, he can't offer a rational argument. Yeah, but he the can people offer a like lot it. The point is, the people but like it. Because it's an entertainment. Like Anybody Mussolini can get up and too. yell. Exactly, yeah. they yeah. can yell, yeah. yell and scream, and that's the whole point. But that's not the way it should. Yeah, but he's doing that not within the realm of we're just climbing up Mount Sisyphus. He's climbing it in a realm where that change that he's talking about, and then Bernie on the other side is talking about real change from the bottom up and everything, is a time when we're coming to this realization. And what was Obama's campaign slogan? 2008? I'm for change! That was Obama. Well, maybe there's a limitation of what so, you're able to do. You couldn't do it all at once, but... They didn't anyway, do anything. Things are worse thing, than ever. Yeah, well, I don't know if that's the case. Actually, it's, uh, I think there's some progress. Ask anybody under 40. Well, okay. Uh, yeah, I know quite a few people under 40. Well, ask them. Well, and every the younger time they, they come are, on the, the show, more they're for some sort of a change. Well, of course, because they, there's no future when you have, you're saddled with student debt. I think it's the youth are more optimistic. Uh, they excuse got more me, Harold. There's no them. future when you're saddled with student debt and looking forward to paying it off. There's no future when you have to when you have to pay these ridiculous rents. Right. And the, you're right. Because of the greed. And they've had the all those years industry. to ex they've had all those years to experience how impossible it is to ever seem to get elemental justice for all. Sorry, we've run out of time. Tony, we've got to do more. Good to talk great. to you. We've run right okay. out of time. Well that's thank you for great. viewing. We'll be coming back again <laughs> tomorrow, uh, here on Conversations and we thank you for viewing. Thanks, Tony, for coming. Keep up the good we've got to keep in touch and Absolutely. Hold, fasten your seatbelts, ladies and this is gonna be some sort of a, a cha uh, an interesting time we're coming into over the next few months. Okay. That's right. If you offer the seat on the rocket, take the seat. No. Coming back uh, <laughs> coming back tomorrow. Thanks for uh, viewing uh, okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. To the loo, to the loo. Mm. No, it's on the it's on the screen. No, we're not. We mm. still have twenty seconds. You got something quick to say. Ten seconds. Yes, I'm say going to say quick. something say to quick. my sister in Florida. Six, my, five, four, uh, oh, okay. three, I'll just say I'll just count four, down with you. One zero. Take off. Rocket, yes. Yeah, okay, good. Okay. That.